what this is, you guys, you do need, you do need to know, um, you don't need to know, I'm sorry, you do not need to know the whole entire structure. Even though, if you break it down little by little, this is a nitrogenous space, it's a sugar molecule, sugar molecule, two phosphate, you know it, it's no big deal. But this molecule right here, the entire molecule is called uh, nicotinamide. Okay, so nicotinamide is called, abbreviation is an NAD. They use this NAD, and I use the abbreviation from here on as NAD. So NAD, it becomes reduced, it's a reducing NAD becomes, this becomes oxidized, and right here becomes NADH. All it does, the difference between this molecule and that one between NAD and NADH, if you look at it, between the difference between NAD and NADH is the hydrogen right here. And of course, the nitrogen here is being uh, oxidized a little bit too. But right here is that uh, it's the hydrogen. This one, look at the carbon here has two hydrogen attached to it. The carbon here has one hydrogen attached to it. But still, it has four covalent bonds around it. Still, it has four covalent bond around it. This one, this carbon right here, has four covalent bond around it, but two hydrogen, and this one has only one hydrogen, still have four covalent bond. That's the difference between NAD and NADH. You eat food, you eat food, you turn this, the apple you had this morning, the banana you had this morning, the uh, cereal you had this morning, all you're trying, all your body, the cells of your body are doing this automatically for you. Did I turn it off? The cells of your body are doing this automatically for you. I think it is on. Yeah, we've got to designate somebody to be in charge of that. Okay, this, the, the apple you ate, whatever food you ate, it turns this into this. That's it. And of course, you will learn later on, you will learn that this NADH becomes ATP. This is not ATP in your body. Your body cannot use, the cells of your body cannot use this as money. You remember, we talked about this. Inside of your cells, ATP is like money. Without ATP, you are kaput. Y'all are kaput in German. Broken down. Kaput. Shish kebab. Right? So that's what happens. That's it. That's all I want you to know. NAD becomes, after you're eating food, NAD becomes NADH. Of course, they're saying uh, reduction of NAD dehydrogenase is the name of the enzyme that makes NAD to NADH and uh, re reduction of NAD to NADH and of course NADH becomes oxidized oxidation <coughs> of NADH to NAD, and that happens. But we'll talk about how does this, we will talk about it, not today, we will talk about how does this turn into this. And then when this NADH becomes NAD, then in between makes some ATP, and you will see that, okay? Okay, you need, there is no way in the world, don't think that I, I was born knowing that stuff. I was not born knowing that stuff. I went over that stuff at least, so far in my life, 500 times. Teaching it, studying it for different classes. <coughs> okay, so if you think you just by sitting here and you know the material and you understand it and you can come on the day of the exam and take the exam or quiz, I'm sorry, it will not work. You have to go home and study it, okay? And this is probably the first time or maybe second time in your life you're being exposed to it. Most of you first time, if you didn't have any high school biology. And I, I, I've been over it 500 times. Okay. Anyhow, this is the NAD. As you can see, there is no hydrogen here. There is one but it's supposed to be two. And here it is, NADH, there are two of them, okay? Oh, just all that food you eat, all that Brad Pitt we talked about, eh, because of a, eh, eh, 
about hydrogen? Eh, that's nothing. Well, let's talk about it. Okay, dehydrogenase is the name of the enzyme that turns NAD to NADH. Okay, NADH passes through the electron, electron transport chain, which we'll talk about later on in the semester. Unlike an uncontrolled reaction, the electron chain uh, passes electrons in a series of steps instead of, instead of expulsive uh, reactions. Uh, O2 pulls electrons down the chain, energy yielding tumbles, the energy yields used. Okay, after you look at the pictures, the diagrams, and so on and so forth for the rest of uh, this chapter, and then come back to these, see if these make sense or not. Okay, but anyhow. Here is what happens in case of oxygen. Oxygen also, uh, in, with the presence of water inside of our cells, become uh, water. Oxygen plus hydrogen, it gives you water. And then it's a chain of event. This diagram, it, it's what's saying that this chain of event create water and ATP. And you will see that uh, uh, next week. This week, I have to stay with the very basic stuff at the beginning of when the glucose molecule breaks down. At the beginning, when the glucose molecule breaks down. But you will see this uh, toward the end. Again, writing, oh my god. Uh, the stage of cellular respiration, the preview, yes, harvesting of energy glucose has three stages. That was in your, um, that was in your um, homework question, right? That was in your homework question. Three stages, glycolysis, the very first step, you ate the apple, you ate the banana this morning, the very first step is glycolysis. Very first step, and, I'll, and we'll go over that today. Then, we will not go over it today, is citric acid cycle. Then, it's electron transport chain. We call it oxidative phosphorylation. I have a question. I call it electron transport chain. Yes. Is you know. the, the citric acid cycle the same as the Krebs cycle? Same. Okay. Two names. There are three names for it. Citric acid cycle, Krebs cycle, and oh, there is another name for it. Citric acid cycle, Krebs cycle, there's one more. It won't come up. I can't think of it right now. There are three names. Three names for the same thing. Okay. And then, of course, oxidative phosphorylation or electron transport chain, which you will see it later on. Okay. Here is glycolysis. And for the rest of the PowerPoints, that's what this PowerPoint is all about. The rest of the PowerPoints, glycolysis is, is color coded blue. Uh, the rest of uh, pyruvate oxidation, which is citric acid cycle, it is, uh, uh, it is orange. And then oxidative phosphorylation, which is electron transport chain, it is what color is calling it. Color coded purple. Okay? Are you guys ready for those three stages? Well, we will not talk about, maybe we'll talk about this one, but this one is very elaborate. We'll talk about the first one first. Okay. Here is big picture. This diagram is a big picture that uh, electrons via NADH glycolysis, glucose breaks down to pyruvate. Where does this happen? Inside of the cytoplasm of the cell. So inside of a cell, in cytoplasm right here, in the cytoplasm where a glucose molecule breaks down <coughs> to pyruvate. Am I making some sense? Not in mitochondria. That does not happen quiz question, often every semester quiz or exam question, where does glycolysis occur? In the cytoplasm of the cell, cytosol. And of course it gives you some ATP. It gives you, when, when glucose molecule break down to pyruvate, it gives you some ATP, not a whole lot. Some, not a whole lot, okay? And he did, he did draw you the mitochondria. This is the mitochondria. And then, of course, pyruvate, this is a big picture, right? Pyruvate goes inside of mitochondria, and pyruvate oxidation becomes acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA enters the citric acid cycle, or Krebs cycle, and then also citric acid cycle, or Krebs cycle, comes a lot of ATP, and then you know, it goes through um, electron transport chain, and it gives you a lot of ATP. Okay, so citric acid cycle, Krebs cycle, gives you one or two ATP, one ATP. 
it is the electron transport chain that gives you a lot of ATP. And here, oxidative phosphorylation, electron transport chain that gives you a lot of ATP. Okay? Here, let's see what the video says. Some of these videos are not so exciting. Uh, some of them are okay. As this mountain biker heads up the trail, the breakfast he ate this morning is being burned to power his bike ride. His breathing rate increases as his leg muscles demand more oxygen to burn more fuel. Let's zoom down to where this fuel is burned, our cells. Here, the blood vessel on the left delivers fuel <coughs> and oxygen to a single muscle cell. In cellular respiration, energy and fuel is converted to ATP, shown here as starbursts. Most ATP is made in the cell's mitochondria. ATP powers the work of the cell, such as contraction. Let's take a closer look at how ATP is produced from a molecule of glucose, our fuel. Only the carbon skeleton is shown to keep things simple. The first step is called glycolysis, and it takes place outside the mitochondria. <coughs> to begin the process, some energy has to be invested. Next. The molecule is split in half. This is glucose. Now, the molecule <coughs> NAD+, plus, an electron carrier, picks up electrons and hydrogen atoms from the carbon molecule, becoming NADH. Keep track of the electron carriers. They play an important role by transporting electrons to reactions in the mitochondria. In the final steps of glycolysis, some ATP is produced, but not much. For every glucose molecule, only two net ATPs are produced outside the mitochondria. However, glycolysis has produced pyruvic acid, which still has a lot of energy available. Let's follow this pyruvic acid molecule into a mitochondrion to see where most of the energy is extracted. As the molecule enters the mitochondrion, one carbon is removed, forming carbon dioxide as a byproduct. Electrons are stripped, forming NADH. Coenzyme A attaches to the two-carbon fragment, forming acetyl-CoA. Coenzyme A is removed, and the remaining two-carbon skeleton is attached to an existing four-carbon molecule that serves as the starting point for the citric acid cycle. The new six-carbon chain is partially broken down, releasing carbon dioxide. Several electrons are captured by electron carriers, and more carbon dioxide is released. The carbon dioxide that you exhale comes from the reactions of cellular respiration. Two ATPs are produced by the citric acid cycle for each molecule of glucose. At this point, only a small number of ATPs have been produced. However, more energy is available in the electrons that are being transported by electron carriers. While the citric acid cycle starts another round, let's follow an electron carrier to the next step in the process. Electron carriers such as NADH deliver their electrons to an electron transport chain embedded in the inner membrane of the mitochondrion. The chain consists of a series of electron carriers, most of which are proteins that exist in large complexes. Electrons are transferred from one electron carrier to the next in the electron transport chain. Let's take a closer look at the path electrons take through the chain. As electrons move along each step of the chain, they give up a bit of energy. The oxygen you breathe pulls electrons from the transport chain, and water is formed as a byproduct. The energy released by electrons is used to pump hydrogen ions, the blue balls, across the inner membrane of the mitochondrion, creating an area of high hydrogen ion concentration. Hydrogen ions flow back across the membrane through a turbine, much like water through a dam, the flow of hydrogen ions spins the turbine, which activates the production of ATP. These spinning turbines in your cells produce most of the ATP that is generated from the food you eat. The process you've just observed, cellular respiration, generates 10 million ATPs <coughs> per second in just one cell. That ATP can power a biker up the trail, or it can power your brain cells as you learn challenging biology topics. 10, 10 million, I, that's a number I didn't know. 10 million ATP per cell. <clears throat> wow, that's a lot. Anyhow, 
the process that uh, uh, the other name is I just those it's, it's called tricarboxylic acid cycle tricarboxylic acid cycle same as Krebs cycle if it comes up really more, but if it doesn't don't worry about it. The process that generates most of ATP called oxidative phosphorylation because it's power of those reaction. Oxidative phosphorylation accounts for 90% of the ATP generated by cellular respiration. So the uh, electron transport chain tricarboxylic acid cycle or Krebs cycle he mentioned, 90%. 90% of ATP comes from tricarboxylic acid. Krebs cycle, electron transport chain, oxidative phosphorylation. A smaller amount of ATP is formed from glycolysis and citric acid cycle by substrate level phosphorylation for each molecule of glucose degraded uh, to CO2 and water by respiration. The cell makes up to 32 ATP, which I will talk about that. Okay, you all know this. I don't have to go over it anymore. Substrate. And uh, it has phosphate plus ADP gives you ATP and the product plus the enzyme. Nothing in there. Wow. I want pictures. I want pictures. Glycolysis harvests chemicals energy by oxidating, uh, oxidizing glucose to pyruvate. Glycolysis, the sugar splitting breaks down glucose into two molecules of pyruvate. Glycolysis occurs in the uh, uh, cytoplasm and has two major phase energy in, uh, investment phase and energy payoff phase. Glycolysis occurs uh, whether or uh, not O2 is present. Here we go. Okay, now we are talking. And I will stop uh, right after here. Okay, so glycolysis, let's talk about glycolysis here. There are three phases, glycolysis, pyruvate oxidation, citric acid cycle, they are, uh, he's calling this as a stage, but Pretty much when the pyruvate comes into my uh, mitochondria, then you have citric acid cycle, and then there are three phases actually: glycolysis, citric acid cycle, and oxidative phosphorylation. Okay. As far as glycolysis, guys, you do not have to know the steps. I'm going to make you some sense. So everything for glycolysis that you have to know, I will write it on the board. So. You would know, but again, let's go over it together once. So, uh, and I write on the board what is it that you need to know? Glycolysis. Glycolysis. Lysis at the end of the word means what? Huh? Breakdown. And then glyco, it means sugar. Do I make sense? So your sugar, breaking a sugar molecule, a sugar molecule has how many carbon? Oh, six. How many hydrogen? How many oxygen? Six. You learned that at the beginning of semester. So when the cells, in the cytoplasm of the cell, it happens where? It happens where the cytoplasm of the cell. The glycolysis occurs in the cytoplasm of the cell cytoplasm of the cell. And then when you have a glucose molecule breaks down to two molecules of pyruvate at the end, when a glucose molecule breaks down to two molecules of pyruvate at the end, you have total, let's say, gross, is that right? Gross. Gross, you have four ATP. Net, you have two ATP. And at the end, from one glucose molecule, how many molecules of pyruvate you make? Two pyruvate. Another name for pyruvate is pyruvic <coughs> acid. Anytime you say eight at the end of the word, ATP. A, T, it means acid. At the end, you get, at the end, you get two pyruvate, two net ATP, four gross. You all know the difference between gross and net? Gross salary, it means 
your taxes, your insurance, your everything else you make is your gross salary. But after you pay taxes, after you pay for insurance, whatever you bring home, that is your net. Do I make sense, everybody? That's a gross and net difference between gross and net. Okay, so, and of course, you're breaking down in glycolysis, you're breaking down the glucose, it happens in cytoplasm, you're getting gross for a net two, and of course, you end up with two pyruvate. And that's pretty much in this chart right here. Oh, one more, one more, one more, one more, the most important one, one more. Two NADH is also synthesized. That's all you have to know for glycolysis, guys. That's all you have to know there. Two NADH is being made, gross for ATP, net to ATP, two pyruvate, cytoplasm, and of course you're breaking down glucose molecules to two pyruvate. How many carbons each pyruvate has? Anybody study the head? Three. Pyruvate. has three carbons. How many carbons glucose have? Six. Six. So this one has, each pyruvate has three carbons. None of your carbons were lost. Am I making some sense? None of your carbons were lost. Are you ready for a step by step? There are 10 steps in glycolysis. There are 10, about 10 steps. Alicia, are you ready? Let's go. Here it is, a glucose molecule. Glucose molecule, I had to memorize this when I was taking biochemistry. I had to memorize this when I was taking uh, nutrition classes. I had to memorize, not you guys. Not you guys. I just want you to see it once, and then you know all of that information, hopefully. All of that information you should know, but not here. Let's go over it quickly, quickly. <clears throat> One glucose molecule becomes <coughs> glucose 6-phosphate. Where do you get the phosphate right here? You get the phosphate right there by converting ATP to ADP. So you are investing, you are investing two ATP, that's another thing you should know, investing two ATP. You're converting glucose that you ate from mashed potato this morning for your breakfast. You're converting it to glucose 6-phosphate, of course, at the expense of one ATP becoming ADP. And then glucose 6-phosphate becomes fructose 6-phosphate by help of enzymes, of course. All of these enzymes are taking place. Fructose 6-phosphate becomes fructose 1,6-bi. Bi, it means what? Two. Where did you get that the second phosphate? Where did you get it? Another ATP. So you invested two ATP into glycolysis. Am I making some sense? Everybody can. Uh, Catherine, are you with me? Everybody's with me. So glucose six, uh, fructose one six biphosphate breaks down to glyceraldehyde three phosphate. Two of them. How many carbon this one has? Glyceraldehyde three phosphate. How many carbon does it have? Anybody? Catch it. How many carbon glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate has? Three. How many did you make? Two of them. Am I making some sense? And how many steps is that so far? One, two, three, four steps so far. There's six more left. Here they are. Well, bigger picture, I guess. These are, uh, you already, we already talked about these. Is that right? You all know, right? Fructose 6 phosphate, fructose 6 phosphate becomes fructose 1,6,5-phosphate, and then becomes glyceraldehyde. And then each one of this, that glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, turns NAD to NADH. NAD to NADH. Why two of them? Anybody? Why two? Why did they write on 2 NAD to, uh, to NADH? Anybody? Why they write on two? I, I'm turning one 
glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate to 1,3-biphosphatase glycerate. Why they wrote down 2 here? Because you start out in this reaction, you are doing 2 of the glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. 2, you remember the last 2 of them? 2 of them becomes 1,3-biphosphate glycerate. So it gives you 2 NAD becomes 2 NADH. It turns 2 NAD to 2 NADH. And then when this one, 1,3-biphosphate glycerate becomes 3-phosphoglycerate, it gives you what? 2 ATP. 2 ADP becomes 2 ADP. And then of course there are two of them, so you have 4 ATP. You have 4 ATP. And then uh, uh, another 2 ATP here, I'm sorry, you have 2 ATP here and 2 ATP here, and then steps, 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 another ATP, so you end up with 4 ATP here. This right here, so you have 3 glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate becomes 1, 3 biphosphoglycerate, 2 NADH, and then 2 ATP out of those 4 ATP, 2 of them is here. And then two ATPs here, that's why you've got four ATP. And then at the end, you have how many pyruvate? You have one pyruvate here. And you see what is in the background? It's like two pages of paper. Do you guys see that mm -hmm. in here? Because there is two pyruvates, not one. There are two pyruvates. Doesn't make sense, I hope. You have to go home and look at it. No more writing. I've got to go fix my PowerPoints. I think these are the ones, these PowerPoints were the ones that I got it before fixing them. But then, 10 steps. 10 steps. 10 steps you don't have to know. Right? But you have to know glycolysis, everything that I wrote on the white. If you are wondering where do they come from, right here. Right? Am I making some sense? <coughs> Your lab for today. <coughs> um,